Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Rogers State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with the station's general manager, Royal Ailes, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Royal, to, you bet. for joining us you today. Bet. Happy to be here. So you're managing a amazing station with a, a very compact team, mm. and you have a mighty, mighty impact. Talk I like, about I that. I like the word compact. Compact. <laughs> yeah, we are compact, and we do have a, a great uh, touch in the community. We are well known for who we are and what we do, and that's that has been in the making for 32 years, but it has really hit our stride in the last seven years. And I'm, I'm just so proud of what we're able to do in, the, in our space here in Northeast Oklahoma, promoting the university, but really connecting with our audience. That is huge for us. And what's really great is that as I've met your people, everybody is a switch hitter. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> plays multiple positions. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> is like, what can I do next? What right, can I do right. next? And it seems that that everybody has ownership over the ultimate product of the station. Right. Yeah. As you know, as you travel to other public TV stations, it's not uncommon, right, for us to be that way. We do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> we work hard, and we earn the respect and the viewership of, of, of what we gain from our viewers. And that's the only way you can make it work. I mean, everyone here has to do two to three jobs. Um, but it was the way when we grew up in broadcasting. Back when I entered the industry in the 80s, it was that way. It changed in the 90s, 2000s a little bit, but it's drifting back that direction just because of the nature of the industry. I happen to love it that way because you're not bored. You're, you, you are a creative genius if you're good at what we do. And these, this team that I have in place are fantastic. They're Emmy Award winning uh, peop, producers. We, uh, because we're university owned, we have uh, student staff and they have to put hands to the plow and we help them find a job if that's what they want to do in, in traditional media. And that's what I love about what we do. And you are serving a broad community. So we'll talk about the mm -hmm. broadcast area. Um, people are geographically dispersed. Mm -hmm. And then you also are serving the university. So we'll talk about that. But let's first talk about your broadcast area, your viewership, the people that you serve, the kind of broadcast that you do. The area that we serve is the Tulsa market. We serve about 25 counties in that market. We touch on southern Kansas and a little bit of northwest Arkansas, but, but it's all within the 25 counties, what's called northeast Oklahoma. Uh, our viewership is diverse in the sense that, yes, we have two really big metro areas, Tulsa and Bartlesville. Uh, however, once you get outside those areas, it really is, becomes diverse. Culturally, it becomes diverse. Economically, it becomes diverse. We have some of the poorest counties, uh, not only just in Oklahoma, but in the country. Um, so social economics is a big uh, influencer in what we do and how we can do it. And your business is, the business here, the economic base here uh, has a particular character. Talk a little bit about that. What are, people, uh, what are people doing? How are they earning their living? Well, if you live in Tulsa, you're very white collar. Right. But outside of Tulsa is very blue collar or rural farming. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up on the farm in Delaware County, which our viewers know where that is. It's not that far from here, but um, it's very rural, very, f um, very farming community that, that everyone has to, to grow up on, but it's also very impoverished. Talk about your team and, and how many people there are and what kind of roles. Well, we have a like. staff of, of 12. Mm -hmm. We're a small station, one of the smallest stations in the country. But I have a, si a staff of 12 people here, uh, four producers, master control operators, people in, in finance, people in trying to help me raise funds, um, and engineering. And the engineers are fantastic because they keep the lights on, keep things working. And they can do pretty much anything, right? <laughs> there's, there's... Yeah. First thing I learned in television when I got my first job was make friends with the engineers. engineers. They will save your bacon. And that's what we do here. Everybody multitasks. You have to. Right. I've got Emmy Award winning producers on staff. I've got engineers who are in the process now of upgrading a lot of our equipment. Um, we are moving our station forward in technology. We're moving our station forward in teaching our students how to be great, the art of broadcasting. We are moving the station forward. And to be in the cradle of Northeast Oklahoma in the middle of uh, tribal country is huge. And to know that our viewers have found us, they love watching us, 
they're loyal to us, that's really great news for us. In terms of your revenue model, how does that work? So our source of revenue really comes from the federal government, the university. They also contribute about 300000 to us here. And then uh, underwriting. It doesn't, we cover our bills. That's what we're supposed to do. That's how we make it all work. But we're, we're always working trying to build excess into an account. So when we have equipment failure, failure we can fix it. And that's what we've able, been able to do over the last seven years. Talk about uh, your programming mix. Some of the programming are rebroadcasts or, or um, streams of, of uh, broadcasts, mm. programs that are produced elsewhere, uh, but you also produce your own programs. Mm -hmm. So talk about that mix and in particular uh, emphasize the programs that you produce. We love our syndicated programs that we bring to the house. We have become known for our British programming mix of program. Okies love the BBC. I don't understand why. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of the BBC. Con I'm not, I don't, I'm a Jerry Lewis kind of co comedy guy. I don't get the British humor, the, the, but Okies do. They love the, it. The Masterpiece Theater and the, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, and the Downton Abbey. Monty Python now. I didn't get growing up, <laughs> but they love that stuff. And uh, so when we bring on programs like Midsummer Murders, they absolutely eat it up. So we've been able to bring more of that because of our underwriting, mm -hmm. bring more of that onto the station, um, as well as our documentaries that we bring in from other communities. And then you go into the content that we build. We build half hour, several half hour programs, not just a public affairs show, but we build tourism content. Right. We build an academic game show. Uh, and then we do, we really have found our niche in interstitial builds, the short videos from one to three minutes. Our Oklahoma Hero, Hero series that we've done is an Emmy-nominated uh, program that we put together. Uh, so we're constantly looking for ways to connect with the audience. What makes them want to watch? What makes them want to get engaged with us? The engagement is this is the communication street, the two-way factor here. Because if we can, if we build a program that, that no one really cares about, then you've lost your communication. Well, also, it's it's so important that people understand and that and that they share the identity of a place right oklahoma heroes the interstitial work that you that you're doing um s some of these other um uh pieces that are really about here mm -hmm. the tourism you were telling me a story mm -hmm. off camera about uh some of the places that you've covered here in oklahoma that encourage people to to visit their own state visit visit places here that are just treasures and and that uh, awareness creates that connection, and then dollars get spent, economies get built, people earn money, there's joy that's that, that's spread, and it's right here in our own backyard. If we're not promoting who we are, right. where we are, then why would someone from Miami, Oklahoma, want to come down to the Tallahena Drive and see the fall foliage? Why would they want to do that when up in Miami, there are no hills up there? It's, it's like Kansas. Right. But Tallahena is beautiful down there in, in the Tallahena Mountains. It's, it's, if you're not promoting who you are, where you are, then tourism, people aren't going to get in a car and go on a road trip for the day. Mm -hmm. What is next for, uh, for RSU TV? Um, you've just had a, a, um, a real upgrade and you're in the process mm -hmm. of doing an upgrade. Talk a little bit about that and, and, and how you um, will evolve into the future over the next years. Well, we've been able to work with the federal government uh, in, in restoring or renewing our tower and transmitter, which is how all of our viewers can watch us over the air through that transmitter. So we were able to, to put in a new one there. Uh, downstairs in our server room, we're, able to, we're in the middle of revamping that, putting in a new server, uh, which means infrastructurally, with technology, we will be brand new from top to bottom. The next phase for us is to add a third channel. I want us to have a third channel. Having more, having five or six channels means nothing because most of that stuff's passed through anyway. Right. Uh, I don't care about that, but I want to make sure our next channel is connected to the community. Why are we doing this third channel? And I want it to be an arts channel. So how do we connect with the arts in Northeast Oklahoma? And then what we do with that programming, how do we distribute that back out so the rest of the country can mm -hmm. see what's happening in Tulsa in Northeast Oklahoma? That's what we're really focused on moving forward. Uh, we're a couple years away probably from having all that done, but if we don't start now, we'll never get there. 
And uh, my goal is to be talking to the station WNET in New York to make that channel happen because they're the ones building the channel. Well, and, and that is also so important, the recognition of value, mm -hmm. of programming that emanates from here, of interest, and the intelligence that is developed here, that is also something that is missing. The United States is not just the major metros. It just isn't. Right, right. right. Our country is our country. It's the entire country. And so bringing to the country what, ha what is produced here is, is so vitally important. You, that's a great point to make because STEM education is not just in big right. schools, in big metropolitan areas. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And it's so, on the farm. <laughs> you, oh, believe me, you're, you're totally correct because we are connected with STEM. Who would have thought that a small public TV station in Claremore, Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa, is connected to a STEM educational program? Who would have thought that 10 years ago? Try figuring out crop yields without math. <laughs> exactly, <Right? laughs> exactly. So the goal here is for us to be connected in the STEM world on education, because we're educationally mandated by Congress. So I carry that mantra, I wave that flag, I, I step under that umbrella constantly, knowing that that's how we, we are judged. Are we really carrying, pushing forward the, the uh, the factor that education is our mandate, and we are. We're also working on, with the industrial park, about manufacturing jobs and getting young men and women who don't want to go to college just yet, but want to get a STEM-related high-paying job right out of high school. We're bringing awareness that these, these jobs are out there. How do we do that? By bringing the high schools into the plants and doing interstitials and promoting these jobs and what it means to be a CNC operator. How'd you get here? Why do you enjoy the job? What do I have to know about to get that job? And that, again, is related back to STEM. Service service to the business community as well, service to the mm -hmm. students, service to families. Sir, yeah, and and connected to the schools. It's not just providing them PBS learning. That's great. But how can I, as a public TV station, be embedded in that school so when these kids are going out in the field, I'm there with them showing them how to use the camera, a little television production, Never hurts anybody, but yet they're learning about that job. So maybe down the road when they graduate in a year or two, I remember I did that. Let me go apply for that job because it's paying $30 an hour. That's a big, big deal. Big, big deal in rural Oklahoma. And most of these kids don't realize a $30 an hour job is just down the road. So we're trying to bring that awareness to them. So important, Royal Ailes. Thank you so much for sharing the work, the vital work, of RSU TV and Roger State University in Oklahoma. And thank you so much for your insights. Thanks for being here. Thank you, sir. You bet.